Hello and welcome to this series, which is going to be making a full RPG out of RPG Architect. So we're going to teach you all of the skills and concepts and tools within RPG Architect so that you can create all of the systems in an RPG. The first thing we're going to do is um, you're probably watching this video either because you own the product and are sold on it already, or you may be interested in it. I'm going to have some timestamps on this YouTube video. So if you already own RPG Architect and you're not really trying to figure out whether or not this is the product for you, feel free to skip ahead to the next section because I want to spend just a couple of moments talking about the pros and cons of RPG Architect compared to some of its competitors. So RPG Architect has a lot of pros going for it right now. Obviously, otherwise I, I probably wouldn't be making this tutorial series. And one of the biggest pros is just the absolute customization. The developer clearly, clearly cares about um, the ability to, to kind of do whatever you need to do with the system. And there's a lot of pros that come with that. That being said, another pro is that it's relatively easy to get an RPG up and running compared to another engine such as Unity or Unreal Engine or, or something where you really would having to be create all of your systems from scratch. Um, some of the limitations right now are one, it's in, it's under active development, which actually is, is a pro and a con in and of itself. The act the developer is really, really active. And so there's an update almost every single day right now. Um, so that is a huge pro is, is it's really exciting to be a part of something and, and see this active development. But the con does mean that a lot of the features that will eventually be in this um, are not currently in it. And that might mean that even as you're watching this, there are more features or maybe menus look different than as you're watching this tutorial. Another con is that the customization that is offered is so huge that it does take more setup work compared to another similar RPG engine such as RPG Maker. What that means is there are things like menus that you'll have to create with an RPG architect that RPG Maker already have set up. Now the major pro of this is that by creating this from scratch, you're almost guaranteed not to have a game that looks exactly like an RPG Maker game. I'm sure you've been on Steam or Discord or Reddit and, and you've seen these indie games that you're like, hey, that is an RPG Maker game. You're probably not going to get that with RPG Architect, especially if you go outside of these resource packages, which are, are kind of the sample packages, um, because you are creating those menus and things like that. And so you're, you're not relying upon um, what has been pre-created by RPG Maker. Um, all of that to be said though, it's a great time to get into development with RPG Architect because there is enough here that we can create an RPG, but there is still so much more to come. All right, let's dive into the project. Here's the scope of what we're gonna create. We're gonna create a playable RPG. And so we're gonna have battle systems and menus and items and equips, all of those things. And so when we're gonna get started, we are going to focus a lot um, graphically on these final boss blues time fantasy graphics. Now I'm going to make a plug. You can see the itch um, link here. Final boss blues also has a Patreon and I have been a patron of final boss blues for years, way before I, I have heard of RPG architect and it is really, really worth it. Um, they put out a lot of great graphics at, at a pretty consistent basis, but you, you won't need that patron patronage to partake in these tutorials. I'm going to try to keep the resources as limited as I possibly can. And so, um, but just know that this is a great resource for you. Okay. Diving in, we're going to click 32 because this is, I believe the tile dimensions of final boss blues. Um, and then we're also going to just click 1280 by 720. Honestly, you can use whatever resolution you want to do for today's project. We are going to be doing a 2d um, so we're going to go ahead and just set that to 2d. Uh, we're not going to constrain this right now, um, because maybe we decide we want some parts of 3d later, but right now we're just going to stick to this. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and create a project path. Um, I have mine just under here and we're going to call this just tutorial series. And then we are going to also just load in the sound, the fonts. We're going to load everything in, even though we're going to stick with this time fantasy, just because we, you know, you don't, you don't know when we want it. So go ahead and hit OK. And then the project will load. 
It's going to take a minute here as it initializes. And right off the bat, you'll see if you are an RPG maker um, person and you've, you've done a lot of development that uh, there's nothing here. Um, and, and this is more comparable to a Unity or Unreal style um, where we are kind of creating from scratch. So if you hit play, you can see no starting position or map was found. Okay, well, let's resolve that. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to call this starting house and um, we're fine with 20 by 20 and we're going to need to go into the database and this is something that may be a little bit more familiar if you're an RPG maker person because a lot of these tabs are pretty similar. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into tile sets and we're going to just call this interior. Now we have a few options in front of us. I'm going to link in the description to some documentation, but it's worth reading what all of these are. Um, animated and terraforming are, are very similar to some of those tiles in RPG Maker that are like paths or water, um, where when you connect them, they create a, a auto linking and auto blending um, tile set. We're going to resize this normal tile sets to one for starters. One of the cool parts about RPG Architect is we can have multiple tile sets within a tile set, um, multiple tile set images, excuse me. But my suggestion and the suggestion that I think I've heard from the developer is that the lower you keep this, the better the performance is going to be. We're going to go into our tiles. We're going to click into here. And let's go ahead and let's just load this structure for starters. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a patron of Final Boss, and so I didn't know exactly what this was going to be coming with. So you, you'll see I named that starting house. We're actually going to create an exterior map, though, I believe, for this. Um, and then we saw that there was some terraforming. So let's go ahead and add that in here. And we also had some water and lava which i believe falls under the animation we're going to hit okay and then when we click into this map and then when we click into this edit the map we'll see all of our tile set appears over here and so we have our flat tiles which these are our normal tile set tiles we have our um structural tiles which is is something we did not add any of we have our terraforming tiles. We have our animated flat tiles. We have our animated terraforming tiles. You can hit control and then scroll on your mouse wheel to change the scale here. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start out by taking the grass and we're just gonna paint and create a, a really, really basic map. And then um, let's just make a super, super, actually the first thing I, I want to point out here is we have these layers down here. I, I probably shouldn't have just painted that um, without doing anything else. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to erase this. If you right click and drag, we can click our erase tool and erase here. I'm, I'm actually going to paint this on the lower. You can see not only do we have layers, but we actually have the ability to add layers, which I think is, is a really, really cool feature. Okay, now let's go ahead and paint some grass. And we're going to go to our base layer, and we're just going to create a, a really, really simple building here. So we're going to go to paint. Um, again, if you've used any software similar to RPG Maker, um, this stuff is probably kind of familiar to you. Hmm. I'm wondering where our straight across is. All right, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're just going to create, you know, a, a really basic map. If, if you're a good mapper, feel free to create something a, a little bit nicer than this. I'll probably go back in later after this video and make a little bit nicer video, but that's not really the point of this. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to click this entity editor and we're just going to right click and we're going to click set new game position. And now we have a runnable game. So let's open it up. 
And you can see we have a beautiful rendering of a game that we can kind of look around in. And we have no character, so we are just moving the camera. Let's get a character added. We're gonna go again into tools and database. This time we're gonna click characters and we're gonna just name our character hero for now. We're gonna go into portrait and we are going to, excuse me, I don't need a portrait, I need a sprite. We're gonna go into sprite, we're gonna click final boss. We're gonna go into these characters over here. And now we need to do a little bit of math. If you have a character that is just a character, so we see like this TF template right here, one thing we can immediately do is we can click this set the sprite frame dimensions based on the frame count and direction. And when we click that, it'll change it to the entire image. And if we see, hey, we have four directions, one, two, three, four, that is true. Three frame count, that is true. And we hit okay, the template will work. But if we're gonna do one of these character sheets over here, we sometimes need to do some math work. And so I'd invite you to play around with these settings. And after you've imported the image that you like, make sure that the boundaries goes around the entire sprite. Um, and then you'll hit okay. And now we have a character. Let's go ahead and run this again. Oh, and we still don't have our character on the screen. What do we need to do? Let's go back into the database. And one of the things we need to do is we need to go into this general tab and it is maybe not general. New game tab, and we're gonna click this party. We're gonna add a party member, and we're gonna just change that to that hero setting. Now, when we launch the game, we have a character. And not only do we have a character, we have an animated character that can move in eight directions. Now, you'll notice a couple of things. One is that we can walk over these buildings, which is not ideal. Two is that our character is moving pretty slow. Um, maybe this would be good pace for a cutscene, but for a game, this would get pretty tedious. And uh, a third thing just to note is that our camera is, is too close. Um, this is too zoomed in. So let's fix all of those things. The first thing we can do is we can head over to this distance and we can just zoom out a little bit and find something that you like. That seems a little bit too far zoomed out. I'm gonna scale it up to five and try again. Still a little bit too zoomed out. I'm gonna go up one more, maybe to six. All right, this looks good for now. Let's keep it at six. Now let's address the speed. We're gonna go back into database and we are going to go into characters again. We're gonna click on our character and we're gonna add a couple of traits. We're gonna add a physical property, which I think this is, is really cool. We can add all of these physical properties. We can add lights to them. We can add scale, speed, velocity, and we're going to set our speed X and our speed Z. Now, if you've used RPG Maker, this might be a little bit confusing to you. You might be thinking, hey, why aren't we using speed Y? Well, that is because RPG Maker, excuse me, RPG Architect can support 3D. And in a 3D plane, the Y axis is our vertical up and down. We're gonna set this to a speed of 300%. And you might be thinking, you know, hit, hit apply and try again here. Um, actually, what we need to do is you'll notice the starting rank up here at the time of the video. I don't know if this will get corrected, but at the time of this video, um, our maximum rank is negative one. We need to change that to zero. Otherwise, it will say, hey, you know, this trade is zero, but you're actually a rank negative one. Therefore, it doesn't apply yet. Now we'll go ahead and we will click launch. And we can see we have ourselves a moving character. The last thing that we're going to address in this brief video is this collision. Let's get the collision working. We need to do a couple of things. First, we need to make sure that our collider is on. And I have been told not to do this box shape collider at this game version. Um, it does seem to make things not work really well. We're gonna do capsule and we're just gonna set this to be um, a diameter of one and a height of two because our character is actually two heights in Final Boss Blues uh, in Time Fantasy is the name I was looking for there. We can see he's two tiles high. If you have a one tile high character, you'd have that be one. And we also need to go into our tile set and we need to go into this collisions. 
and we need to click on our tile set. And then we need to make all of these X's for everything that we want to collide. After this video, I'm going to go in and I will make all of the collisions, but now you can see we have collisions. You may be thinking, hey, I want to be able to walk up to the building. It seems like maybe he's colliding too early. And so you can play around with these collision settings. Maybe we will set this height to one and say, hey, it's only his feet that we really want to collide. And now we can see we, we still don't have quite the, the ability that we want. So we'll play around with that and, and get some settings that we like. Maybe we can change this and try a convex hole or a spear or something like that. Let's see what that does. It also might be the wall settings too. Really, you just want to play around with these settings and, and get something that you're comfortable with. A couple changes later. I quickly wanted to talk about a couple of other mapping concepts that we didn't get into earlier. The first one is that that structure layer that we placed here actually should be here. And I'll show you why. And under this animated, you'll want to change this to three frames with a duration of about 300. And you'll want to make sure this is terraforming is checkmarked. What that creates, let's talk about the structures first. I was a little bit confused uh, earlier, but uh, we just needed to make those structures. And now when we draw, our buildings work like you would expect. When we head over now to our animations over here, we can see that these paint a lot better as well. And when we hop in game, we can see we have some pretty looking water. We have good working collision over here. I haven't set the collision on the water at this point, but you can see how you can get some really great looking maps in no time. All right, well, that is all we're gonna cover in this video. Uh, but join us on our next video to see the, the next steps in creating this RPG.